many piano teachers don't really teach technique that much. They teach musicianship and they uh, assume that the hand will find the best way. And many times with a talented uh, student, this is true. Although many of them way, way back when in the, the misty times of, of ages past, they actually had some teacher who showed them how to work their hands, but it's so far in the past that they forgot. So now it's just music and inspiration and sound. And this works very well in many cases when the student is talented enough to pick up on what's happening. However, as we see all too often in our studios and on, even on our concert stages, it's not always the case. Sometimes the student is trying their best to, to just follow the teacher's advice and just the hand does not have the experience or the knowledge or the wherewithal to fulfill the pianistic needs and the musical needs. Um, now, several schools of, of, of uh, piano technique have grown up over the years. The first of them being the finger action school, which, in which it was wrongly assumed that, that harpsichordists just move their finger. And, and this finger action school was even taught with the eraser being, being, being put on the wrist so that you don't want to move your wrist around too much. Of course, this has nothing to do with real harpsichord technique. In harpsichord technique, the, the fingers need a lot of strength to pull on the plectrum. On the piano, interestingly enough, we can imitate the harpsichord by going down here to feel the escapement. You know that, that point where the, the jack glides off the hammer knuckle and down here two-thirds of the way down you'll feel the key catch only on grand pianos unfortunately and then you can sort of crunch through the rest of the way so you feel it oh it's caught and then it goes through well harpsichordists they would descend the key feel the plectrum on the string and then mm, it's it's gonna pluck it's gonna pluck and finally it plucks now if you just play the harpsichord key it just goes plung but if you get your plectrum on the string and really feel it and then chung, at exactly the right moment it gives this beautiful singing sound very unlike the plink 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 of the harpsichord as we know it that action of feeling the plectrum galvanizes the hand and makes the hand very strong so the idea that we need more uh, strength to get the heavier piano action down is completely spurious it actually takes more strength to get the finger on the harpsichord plectrum and to feel the string and then to feel that moment when it's going to strike. You see, I'm just imitating that and already my entire hand is entirely galvanized. There's the tonus in the hand is quite high. Then, the other problem that harpsichordists had was making melodies. And they have even more of a problem than we do. On the piano, the hammers are going plung, 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 plung. It's hammers hitting strings. How do you make a horizontal melody out of that? Well, in the harpsichord, it was worse. It was pling, 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 not plung, plung, plung. <laughs> <laughs> and they figured out very early on that they have to move the wrist sideways in order to join notes. And this moving the wrist sideways allowed the finger more uh, accurately, with greater precision, to manage the precise moment when the key goes down and the precise moment when the key comes up again. So when on the piano, if you'll hear, ah, you, there's an interval of a second, that's a dissonance. And you'll hear it for a second. You'll hear the dissonance. But the ear, when you, when you play a melody like that, the ear is not fast enough to pick up on those dissonances. It hears the blending of the notes and it assumes, oh, this is a melodic line. It interprets the sounds that it's receiving. And, that, and so we pianists, we create the illusion of a melodic line by joining the notes. That, notice that if I join one note to another to really control the second key going down, I need to stand really well on the first one. If I fall into the second key, I've lost my stability. I've lost the point of reference. I've lost my fulcrum. I can't really control this key. So again, the tonus of the hand is much higher.